What is going on, everybody? This is Games Talk Live, episode two. Yes, and today I have a special guest in the house with me. Of course, he just wrapped up a three and a half hour session on the Iron Lords podcast, which isn't something that isn't, uh, well, I, I guess it's pretty normal for you guys, right? It's, Thanks. You know, it is what it is. Mm -hmm. But before I get started real quick, I just want to give a special shout out to my channel members. Uh, I want to give a special shout out to Hustle and Motivate, Woo! Wise Old Gamer, Mass Erect, and Tony Disney. Thank you guys for being channel members. Of course, you guys can uh, be channel members as well, or not. It's all good. You're here just watching, and I'm happy for that. So thank you very much. And of course, uh, the man of the hour here is Lord Cognito. How's it going, buddy? Bro, Fonz. First of all, we got to stop everything real quick. I just want to yeah, let you what, know, bro. I am so proud of you. I'm so proud of you because this is something that I've seen in you for a long time since we've been talking. You're one of the most passionate mm -hmm. members on RDX. You always, RDX, I always love the guys. You're definitely one of my favorites. I appreciate favorites. you, brother. You know what I'm saying? Appreciate and you. I always felt like you're 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 the pulse of, of the community and you're the heart of the community. And to see you know you grow in the podcast space and just getting your feet wet, I had to support, man. Because you, like I said. And one thing I also love is the nostalgic vibes you always bring. You got the Atari in the back. I'm already feeling the energy. Oh, man. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. But I salute yeah. to you. You're starting to get a new journey with this, you know what I mean? And expanding yourself, so to speak. So I had to show some love, man. I'm doing a double shit, but I was like, I'm energized because this is your, you know what I'm saying? I'm on your second episode. I'm hyped. Yeah. So salute yeah. to you, bro. I, I appreciate that, bro. And and mm -hmm. a lot of people don't know this. You and I are, are pretty close friends. We talk to each other a lot. A lot. Uh, Man, I've leaned on this guy a lot through some trying times and stuff that I've been through over the past year and a half. And I'm telling you, Cognito is one of the most real people out there. And uh, honestly, I, I, when I was thinking about guests for this, sh you know, for this show, I, you came up right away, and I was like, you know, I gotta have Cognito on. I gotta have really all the lords. The lords Thanks. are amazing. So thank you, brother. Uh, it's good to have you on today. But. One thing I really like about what goes on with you and the Iron Lords, the rest of them, is that I like that passion and stuff that you guys have as well. And one thing that I really, really was um, uh, something that I was drawn to when I first watched you guys was not only the fact that you're a charismatic host, but also that you guys are lifelong friends. Yeah. And that's something I want to get into a little bit right now uh Cog, t tell me a little bit about because i love the story about how you and at least three of the members there mm -hmm. on uh uh the iron lords are like close friends and how you got started with gaming together and i, I love that whole story just absolutely, give me a little brother. bit of, of that yeah, absolutely but i try to give you a condensed one but yeah you know growing up in the south bronx you know it was not easy so my mom single parent mom and dad split kind of early and she was really, she was really hard on me, you know, and it, I, now that I look back, you know, I, I see what she was trying to do, but I, you know, I was a little rebellious, you know, your boy was, you know, wanting to run yeah. around and, and do craziness. But then I, I just fell in love with gaming. And during the times, I actually will uh, thank my dad because during the times that I did get a chance to hang out with him, he was the one that pushed me towards gaming. He was the one that had a Coleco vision. He was the one that would take me to the arcades. So do all the things that I wasn't allowed to do. So, you know, so to speak. And then as I got older, it was one of those situations where I'm like, man, you know, I want my own games. I want my own game system, that kind of thing. And then, you know, Saturdays, my house became like this oasis. You know, you have the projects, everything yeah. around us. But my block was known if you come through, you know, whatever you had going on in your life, you can put that to the side. We're going to come out yeah. here. It's going to be Saturdays. We're going to watch the fights. We're going to watch sports, but we're going to play games all day every day and you know king family solve i know since the third grade you know what i mean and there's tons of lords that so, you guys so you're made. going way back you're going way back to land parties right yeah yeah brother did you yeah. have the tv set up oh, and, and brother. were you just yeah, yeah. yeah when halo was one of those moments because that was a phenomenon for us like literally doing the um you know the the, the couch co-op and doing the floor the split screen was amazing but then i forgot how yeah. we found out i think it was like through a gaming magazine i don't know if it's egm game pro one of those magazines back in the day and we found out about land parties 
So everybody's like, no, let's put the money together. You, everybody get a TV. We became me makeshift network admins. <laughs> we got Ethernet yeah, cables. Yeah, exactly. Links and switches and routers. And then, yeah, we split everybody up. And they had their own real estate. Their own. We're like, this is amazing, yeah. bro. So Yeah, yeah I did that with my huge. three brothers as well. Yeah, nice. I did that with my three brothers as well. We we mm -hmm. had the separate TVs going. Mm -hmm. We had the, the LAN cable going. We were playing Halo. Yeah, we had a blast. Mm -hmm. um, uh, what I want to get into here is mm -hmm. uh, now, actually, I want to get into those five questions. Oh, here All we right, go. so you know how this, hey, you know how this works, right? You saw it last week, but I'm going to yeah. let the audience know. So I'm going to give you five questions. Some of these questions can be subjective. However, as host of the show, I have the power to say whether you're wrong or right. <laughs> so we're going to go ahead and play. Mm -hmm. All right. You like that song, right? All right, let's get right. it. I hate it. I hate it. <laughs> anyway, first question. First question. Name one game that launched with the OG Xbox on November 15th, Ooh. 2001. Ooh. Just one game. Just, Just one, one I mean, game. Halo was there. It's so. not hard. Yeah, Halo was there. So I, I'm we in. were all there. Yeah. No, you didn't catch me. I said Halo was there. I was in there. Combat of all. <laughs> yeah, hey. yeah. Halo. That's yeah. right. You got that right. No doubt, okay no doubt. all right here's a tricky one mm -hmm. what was the best sega console oh this is tough it's an opinion based thing it's yeah. an opinion based one this is tough um i'm gonna cheat all right so genesis was my favorite but dreamcast was the best because Dreamcast was, yeah, them on their pinnacle. Them on their pinnacle. That was peak Sega, the most potential. Sega with power and innovation. And then yes. I'll never forget. The Soul VMUs. Power. Oh, the VMUs. It was so ahead of its time. It going online. Let's going talk online. about that. Yeah, yeah facts. Exactly. Facts, Dreamcast facts. was the best Sega yes. console. We were just going to talk consoles. Mm -hmm. Sega Dreamcast was, yeah, it was it. No anyway, question number three. What sold more in the fourth generation of video game consoles? The Super Nintendo or the Sega Genesis? Mm, that's a good question. I think, I think Super Nintendo got them. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to go Super Nintendo. Yes. Oh, yes. Okay. 49 oh, oh, million. Oh, oh. Oh, 40, 49 million to 29 million. So, oh, yo, your sound effect yeah. didn't come through with the last one. I ain't get, I'm not hearing the ding when I need to hear the ding. You yeah. didn't hear that? You didn't I hear that? Mm -mm, I ain't hear the ding. I, oh. I want to feel the, 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 the justification of my right answer. Hey, does, <laughs> does everybody else hear that ding? Does everyone else hear the ding? Maybe because I ain't hear the ding. Let me know if y'all hear the ding because I'm deaf. <laughs> he said he reluctantly yo, solve it, no, yeah, Do they, they hear it? Do they hear it? Chat, talk to us real quick because I ain't hear the ding, man. I'm not hearing no right do you, answer. Do you hear that ding? Yeah, they hear it. Uh, you saw it. Okay. Yeah, you, you saw Vinny. They say okay. 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 So. Here's the fourth question. Okay, okay. If you could only have one gaming experience throughout your lifetime, Ooh. what game would that be? Wow. One game throughout my lifetime? Mm. I know the game that I play that I never get tired of. And I know a game that is special to me. But one game. I can't pick Destiny because it's an online game and you kind of need people to kind of rock with Ooh, yeah this this go I, you know i'm gonna go a super old school the 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 the, the, the my namesake it's gotta be shinobi it's something about the arcade shinobi. yeah the arcade upright version that yeah when i see that yeah. game i have to play from start to finish and i never get tired of it Never that game. I, I, I love it. I guess it was you know what it was for the ninja craze of the 80s. You know what I'm saying? Like it, it was a huge yeah. influence on me. So yeah, I think it would be arcade show. I think it would be arcade show. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. All right. So uh, apparently they're not hearing that ding. Yeah, I'm getting a little so, echo. It's not echo. going through. Yeah, I'm getting Got a echo. echo All right, now it look like it went away. We good. Oh, really? Yeah, we good okay. now. We good now. So mm -hmm. No ding though, no ding, no ding apparently. No ding. no ding. We good, we good. We good. What, 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 is, what is going on with the ding? Not, Come on! They're not feeling work. cock being right. It's not, it's not. It's not working today. I don't know what's going on with it, but there is a ding. Damn, you got it right. Uh, okay, so here's the last question, number five. It's kind of a personal one. All right, and it, it's you know, shout out to all the mothers out there for Mother's Day today. By the way, mm -hmm. uh, how did you convince your mom? 
to buy you a 3DO console. <laughs> I didn't. <laughs> I had to hustle. <laughs> Your boy was hustling. How did you do that? Yeah, yeah, yeah. It was, listen, yeah. I had to have it because what ended up okay. happening. But, I but, think but too, how did you do it? I'm going to tell you how I did it. I, 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 I heard. I, I heard. Mm -hmm. your boy your boy was out there it was all right back in new york city i don't know if people from new york understand it was a joint called uh summer youth so summer youth was like if you weren't i think you just got your working papers or something you weren't 18 yet you got mm -hmm. your working papers so when you got your working papers you were only allowed to work a specific amount of hours during that period and then they would find jobs gotcha. in the community you work at a community center you work at a church or you do all these things and that was a way for kids to get money so i stacked a lot of my bread a lot of my money with that and then i say hey, bro i was i was out i was doing pack a pack of bags i was doing a lot of stuff man i was out here so when 3do came out i had to have it because it was i was a big e at the time i know ea gets clowned now but ea sports back then and i knew ea was behind it and I actually met Trip Hawkins for the video. I actually met Trip Hawkins yeah. came to New Me and King met him. He came to New York City. Um, to, um it was the second time was for the M2, but to to debut the console, which was the Panasonic model, the, the Panasonic 3D. And yeah. we we were wild by what we saw. At the time, it was 32 bit graphics, it was blowing everything away. I think the launch uh, title was called Crash and Burn, was this kind of amazing car game and a road rash kind of futuristic man it was fire bro their road rash was yeah. the best road rash their um madden was the best madden they had tremendous games at launch 3do was very underrated the only thing that i played on the 3do was samurai showdown it was my samurai Ooh. showdown machine uh because back then i was into fighters and i played you know super street fighter uh king of fighters all those fighters back then but samurai showdown was was the game i played it on 3do a lot there was a few games I played on Street the 3D, Fighter, but for Street me, was fire too. Mm -hmm. yeah, it, it was it was a seven dollar hunk of junk to me. You know, after a while, it's like man, uh, like there wasn't too many games out for that. But but, how did you convince her? It wasn't convincing. I'm, if I bought it with my own money, she couldn't tell me anything. Okay, so with uh, her, my mom did not buy me any any of my, any of my oh, consoles. Oh, yeah. oh she okay, never, okay. No, my mom's a strict because super religious. I, I, I not buying you nothing. I, I heard from a little birdie mm -hmm. that there was something about a character from a book series mm -hmm. that was in a game or something from the 3D. Oh, yes. That's what it is. Is like my mom's, she didn't, I won't say she hated video games. She just didn't understand it. So for yeah. us, you know, the convincing was basically I'm not in the street anymore. I'm here. You see what we're doing, right? Gotcha. So thus, that's allowed me and my friends to, to to be here and have fun and as long as we keep the noise down we don't get too crazy like how we would get she was yeah, okay with yeah. that now the story that you're referring to i know what you're referring mm, to is okay. basically the sherlock home when she started to to believe in video yes. games because she yes. saw sherlock holmes on the screen for 3d it was like oh my god like it looked like a real movie to her and that's when she was like okay this game thing that he's doing he's on to something because yeah. she was she was even invest she used to watch me play that was like it's a few games she would watch me, but that was one of them so for sure oh there go the sound yes you heard it yes okay Woo! there it is we back cognito you got all five of them right this is the first time only the second episode but the first time it's happened so cognito uh you um you win here so let me get something here for you special uh, let me see if I got this. All right, Cognito. <laughs> Yo, you found <laughs> Yo, boss, I love Cognito it, wins. Cognito wins the five That's questions. Great. So he's got them all. Uh, thank you for that. I appreciate that. I just like oh, to have a good you. time. It's fun oh, to do. Fun. And I, I want to thank, um, I want to thank, uh, a new member, Tony Bryant. Thanks you. Uh, oh, thank me. you. Appreciate it. And I uh, got a, a couple of super chats I want to read here really quick before they go mm -hmm. away and stuff. I, Man, that, that's one thing I don't like about the super chat system. They go mm -hmm. away so fast. So fast, and yeah. And it's, it's like, come on, give us a break. No doubt. All no right, doubt. so I got one from the, from Punkadish. Mm -hmm. It said, Fonz Incognito, what a duo. Woo! Ma Mass Erect <laughs> says, hit that like button. And I got Brap 
Enrique from Basement Radio Arcade Podcast. Check him out. Salute Fonz Incognito. Woo! I get it. Lord Sav. Lord Sav in the house. Reluctantly yes. supporting the Mass Effect 2 heretics. <laughs> yes, right. we are Mass Effect 2 uh, lovers. We're not heretics, sir. Uh, that would be the Mass Effect 1 gang. Exactly. Uh, Jigga J says... You two are spectacular, and congrats on your show, Fonz. You are my favorite from RDX. I appreciate you, brother. That's very kind of you. Uh, the Ash and Luca, my sis, she Luke. reaches out and says, Hey, booze, good to see the bros on here. Thank you very much, guys. I appreciate that very much. So awesome. Um, so, yeah. So, basically, uh, Cognito. Uh, let's just talk, sit here and talk about um, reviewing games. Right. I know, you know... You're you're no stranger to reading reviews and stuff, mm -hmm. and there was this guy on Twitter. Mm -hmm. um, let me see if I can share this. This was coming from uh, Mike Driver. He he writes for uh, Gaming Bible, and he put out a reminder on Twitter, and he says, "Reminder that you don't need to be good at all good at games to write about them." or stream them, or even make them. You don't need to finish a game to review it, to publish an opinion and score. Most of the time, we don't get the time. Mm. How do you feel about that statement? Yeah, I'm conflicted. I'm conflicted because um, the first part of the statement, I don't have too much of an issue. You know, I don't necessarily attack people for their skill level in a game, or if it's a genre you know, that they're just not the greatest at. That's not the issue. The problem I have is the second part because, you know, yeah. I know this is a practice that goes on. You know, we at lordsofgaming.net, we are very strict about that because for us, there's times, this is how the game, this is how this whole thing works with, with the media and stuff. Now that I'm technically in it, so to speak. You know, a lot of times, you know, if you're not the bigger entity, you know, yeah. you're, you're going to get the game very close to release, maybe a couple of days, three days, four days, right? With an embargo. Sometimes a week or two weeks. And Sometimes they get early. That, that's generous, right? I've seen mm -hmm. situations where we've got the review code two days, three days before. So, and these sometimes are extensive games, you know, big open true, world, true. you know, and the writers will come to us and say, hey, you know, I don't know. I'm going to play it, but I, you know, I don't know if I can finish. Do you want me to give an impression? So what we do is say, look, if you're not finished, give an impressions, but you cannot review until it's complete because that's the true experience. Right, right now, I our, agree. Our, our Outriders review isn't isn't done yet because the game, you know, it's it's an involving game. It, it, it's still going on. It's so long and stuff like that. So yeah, I don't agree with that because the the, the thing is, and again, no disrespect, but it's like. You can't do that in any other genres, Fonz, right? You, you can't no. say, hey, I didn't watch the whole Avengers Endgame, but I'm going to tell you how I feel <laughs> about said movie. Like, it, it, exactly. It, it doesn't make sense. Now, to, to, the only thing I will defend is my last point. The only thing I will defend is that, and this is the structure of the system. What needs to change is, right, these games don't need to be rushed out. They need to give the reviewers and the media more ample time ahead of time to truly dive into these games. And I think what's happening is games may be coming in hot. Then they're giving these to these these uh, media outlets late. And then the media outlets, because if you're not first funds, you get killed by the clicks. Yeah. And I'd rather true. be thorough than just chase the click because at least they'll have confidence yeah. in, in the thing in, in, in the actual and, and, and that's what it's about then then it comes yeah. down to integrity in my opinion yes like if you're gonna sit there and review a game and put a score on it you better damn well have finished that game in my opinion it, it just seems like that's it's kind of a cop out in a way to mm -hmm. say well i didn't have much time well the rest of us don't either exactly. and i know you're you might be a big media outlet or whatnot mm -hmm. But the fact remains that how do you know how this game plays out? How do you know how to put a score in a game that you, that you don't even know how, how it plays out how at the, at out the end? I agree. Because there could always be a twist or something that happens that you don't even get to. Bro. And so for me, it's like if you put out a review, that is not a review. That is an impressions if you don't fin agree. finish the game. 100%. And that's what it should be said. It should just yeah. say my you know, game impressions. Right. Because you know, absolutely. It, it, I, I understand they don't have much time. Mm 
Mm -hmm. Uh, Sometimes these reviewers get multiple games even to review before they come out. Absolutely. But it's kind of their job, right? Yeah. You know, and I I know mm -hmm. it's stressful. You got that small window of time. But again, impressions, not review. Not review. And that's literally what we did. Because it it becomes disingenuous. And you made a great point, Fonz. Yeah. There's so many games that sometimes start off great and then heat up. And it's like, oh, I mean, start off like okay and then heat up you're like oh my god this thing really yes. is more amazing than i thought it could be and then you have opposite yeah. where it's like okay i think something's gonna be great and then you're like all right this is redundant i'm getting tired of it and then so it can go both ways but if you don't complete the whole journey how can you know it's it's not it's not accurate so that, that's just my thought process on it some people like to say like uh r- that rune king in the chat he said uh rune king shaggy he said <laughs> you don't have to finish uh, Balan Wonderworld to know it's trash. LOL. Mm-hmm. Look, I, I know there's some games that you might play and you might know right away, hey, this is not my type of game. I think it's personally trash. Right. But guess what? You can put out that as an impression. That's not yes. a review. Yes. That's like, look, I feel this game is not going to go where I want it to, so I don't like it. This mm-hmm. is what I say it is, but don't put a score on it. I agree. Don't I drag agree. it down. Yeah, It's the rush to be first. and, and I get Don't it. drag it down game. or don't or don't elevate it as well because you can't elevate a game that might be not very good in the end. There's just so many variables with this that it just it boggles my mind why anybody would even defend this quote, this latter part of this quote anyway. Cuz the yeah. first part I totally agree with. You don't have to be good to review. Yeah. As long as you know, you know about these games and stuff and what they're like and mm-hmm. you know you you've played enough games to know better. I I don't mind how good or bad you are if you review a game. But, yeah, you got to beat it. You yeah, definitely have to beat it. I agree. I agree. But, yeah, so, you know, uh, Sony's been in the news a lot lately, Cognito. Mm-hmm. And mm-hmm. I know this whole Apple versus Epic trial has brought out a lot from mm-hmm. Sony and Microsoft even. A lot of emails being dropped. Oh, and yeah. All this stuff. A lot of, lo- lot of nuggets, right? And one of the things that has come to uh, light is the fact that Sony has charged epic games a 15 percent, essentially a 15 percent tax on cross play mm-hmm. and i don't know how i feel about that like i know you know a corporation's gonna corporate right they're gonna <laughs> do what they do business is gonna business mm-hmm. but at the end of the day it's like it's kind of slimy to me mm-hmm. it's like if nobody else is doing this why are you and mm-hmm. I, I just feel some type of way about that um so they're, they're basically charging 15% of the total revenue that is made on these crop plas- uh, platform games outside of their PSN network. Right. And that's something we're going to bring up again is this whole PSN network because there's more to this than just this 15% tax. Right. But how do you feel about that, man? Like, what, what, what's your thoughts? It's been interesting because we've been getting a lot of behind the scenes, what I call how the sausage has been made stuff, right? And yeah. I remember that E3 vividly around that year. Fortnite is just dominating the scene. You know, the 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 actual vitriol. I think that was probably the first time during the PlayStation 4 era where because they were just killing it. They were positively mm-hmm. represented in the media because they were doing all the right things. They had the more powerful console. They had the great exclusives. Everything was just a media dandy for them. They didn't really have too much adversity, I felt, in the generation. And then I was one of the first low points i felt because we were at e3 and i remember big sony outlets pro playstation outlets and stuff like that saying yeah. sony what is going on why isn't there cross play why are you the only company not engaging with the fortnite thing and as much as i can't stand fortnite shout out to fortnite like they forced change in the industry and basically now we're getting back to these documents it's like you know i always wondered how they were able to get the deal done because at the end of the day we know sony was in a position of strength they didn't really seem keen to it in the beginning they were very dismissive and now you know shout out to shout out to geo course like we see in the the, the, the emails and we're like oh that's how you got it you got that extra bread on top so now it became a situation where it's like oh we got to see how this is because i think one of the key lines was like well how is this beneficial to sony you know even though gamers are saying whatever whatever And I mean, it's what you said. Cor- uh, corporations gonna corporate, you know. But yeah. it, you, we yeah, roll you our know, eyes on it. 
Yeah, what you think? It, it's it, when I look at it, it's like mm-hmm. you know, this is something the gamers wanted for a long time. We've all been yeah. asking for cross play, cross progression, all that yeah. stuff. And then when Sony finally decided, hey, we'll do this, we were thinking, wow, Sony's you know for the player for real, like this is great. But and yeah. we didn't know that there was other things involved here. And no matter how you spin it, it's still something that they're taking that other companies aren't and that is and 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 one thing one dangerous thing here to think about too is now that this stuff is out of the bag this is kind of dangerous because it sets a precedence and it's like what are these other companies going to start doing you know are they going to start trying to strong arm or or get people uh, to pay that 15 percent tax as well other developers other publishers what whatnot and i just think that it's just I don't know. I, I don't like a lot of things these corporations do, whether it be PlayStation, Xbox. Right. I mean, we just got Xbox to get rid of free-to-play um, paywalls. And mm-hmm. now we start hearing stuff like this. It's like, yeah. well, did you know? Did Xbox do something? Did Microsoft That's get what, something to listen. take that down? Like, we, we don't know what's... That's what I'm trying to we say. We don't Look, know everything. Well, we don't sometimes, know everything. Sometimes, you know, as gamers, when you actually see how the sausage is made... It's mm-hmm. not pretty. So I'm not going to go super hard on Sony only because there's so much stuff we're not privy to. And and, and these yeah, email exactly. exchanges and, and whoever your favorite console of choice is most likely engaging in some type of these similar type deals to make things beneficial. At the end of the day, look, they don't. We, we know that like, we're friendly with a lot of them. We got respect for a lot of them. We know how much work these devs and all this stuff do. But these corporations are here to take your money. That's just the bottom line yeah. of it. And, and they can say the right things, but if you start to see, you, you peel the, you know, the curtain away from all of them, there's going to be dirt. You know what I'm saying? And I think this is just one of those situations where we like, oh, damn, so we ain't know that. <laughs> but, you know, it's one of those situations where that, that curtain got revealed on this particular company. And it just, it's kind of, it was a little bit surprising. I was like, wow, okay, that's how it got done. Yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. And there's uh, some more there to uh, unpack. Uh, but. Right now, I want to get to a couple of these super chats that came through before uh, they go away. Um, Let's see if I can pull this up. (laughs) It's it's crazy, though. Uh, Got one from uh, Basement Radio Arcade Podcast. Enrique again says, heard Cognito own Sovereign in WWF No Mercy, the champ. That was a Beast in No Mercy. Yeah. That was my range. He was nice, though. Yeah. He was nice. Kai Boxer was nice, but I used to run the tournament. We used to bring the belt home, whoever won. We used to take the WCW, the $200 one, that king board, and whoever won it for the week. Get the oh, home. man. That's funny. Uh, got one from Ramon Terrell, my good buddy. Says, two kings up in here rocking it. Uh, keep rocking it, he says. Thank you, Ramon. I appreciate that. And thank you again, Enrique. And USO Vinny says, Sony has been against crossplay since people started discussing it last gen. Yeah, they were at one yeah. time. That's that's the, that's the thing. It's like now we find out why they're not against it anymore. And uh, again, corporations going to corporate. I love that. Do what they do. I love that. Um, but uh, yeah, I mean, you know, and they, and they all do it. They all have some shade, and and you know, this is something that we just, you know, as gamers that don't typically, you know, fanboy, we we understand that these corporations aren't particularly our friends. So, Mm -hmm. you know, we always got to watch out with a keen eye, make sure they're doing the right thing. If not, we speak up, speak with our wallet. And, uh, you know, we just got to do that. So we just gave Xbox the business about that Xbox Live Gold when they try to pull that fast. Yes, we did. You know, so we got to speak up. Facts. Yep, yep. I wish pe- more people would have spoke up about the $70 price tag, but hey, that's none of my business, I guess, because I was speaking up. So (laughs) too far. But, uh... Yeah, you want that extra ten dollars, or give away that extra ten dollars, but it wasn't worth it. It's not worth it. Um, anyways, uh, got oh, uh, basement radio arcade again says Cog Gaming Media looking sus. Yeah, me and, yeah. Me and Brad have some deep talks about that. Yeah, I you mean, know, here's one thing I want to talk about game media. Uh, so the, the returnal reviews had come out, and there, you know, most of them are glowing and and positive reviews, and uh, correct, you know, it's probably rightly so. Uh, That's cool. Returnals, you know, seems like a good game and everything, but it did have its issues and it still does have some issues. I heard even with this latest patch, I see people on Reddit still having occasional crashes. Mm. Mm. So um, speaking of which, like, why didn't any of the reviewers mention any of these things? 
Like, you can't tell me if nine out of ten of my friends, the people that I run with in this circle, in this gaming community, in a small portion here, nine out of ten has had issues. Why haven't 60-plus critics? None of them. I, I, yeah, I don't understand that. I don't understand that. I don't get know. it. I don't, I don't get it. I mean, um, look, I mean, I'll tell you, you know, I've told people, you know, you know how Fonz, me and you are the looter shooter guys, right? We, we used to yeah. we rock out. So I wanted to love Outriders. Like I want and I still like mm -hmm. it, but it's just like you saw the the experience I had, you know what I mean? And it's like when I'm going through that, I cannot not talk about it. So I don't know what's going on with Returnal in that sense, you know what I'm saying, as to why people are not talking about because I literally when I played it, I had two crashes, and I'm like, look, in this roguelike type of situation where you lose everything, like this is very detrimental to the game. Now, granted, not it everybody is. had the experience, but a lot of people I've seen have it, you know, more than, you yeah. know, more than I thought would. So yeah, they, people got to speak up, you know, you, you got to speak up. If, if it's happening to you, you have to put that in the review. I don't see why not. I, th I think USO Vinny has a good point. Maybe these reviewers just didn't finish it. No, maybe. <laughs> maybe they, they didn't have enough know, hours they didn't get to I don't know. I don't know. <laughs> I don't know. Hey, you know, they, they're admitting that they don't finish sometimes. So yeah. Yeah. it is what shout it is. Shout, shout out to the ones that did finish. Shout out to the ones that did put it out. You know the crashing and oh, stuff man. like that. We had a couple that said, "Yo, it's doing this." I had some people like, like put it out on Twitter on their platforms, their media platform. Put the video, and they be like, "Yo, Returnal, this is not it," and you know, kind of thing. So yeah, and, there are some good ones out there doing it. And some people like Mr. Mass uh, produced two hundred one here says, "I just made it to the fourth biome in Returnal. No crashes or bugs so far." Some people yeah. have had that luck, Maybe. and that's great. Yeah. That's, that's great. awesome. Mm -hmm. But you have people like, you know, Randall Thor, who had a couple of crashes, but still beat the game twice. Yeah. That man beat it twice, God even with him. crashes. God like, bless him. I, I told him, I was like, when he did that, I was like, it was no way I was going back after that crash. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I, I'm, just, I'm just glad that it is being beat by the community, regardless of yeah. issues and stuff. Like, that's, that's fantastic to see, because you don't want to see a game fail anyway. Uh, I hope they get it all fixed and righted and, and everything. And I heard even the Returnal uh, House Mark. Uh, I think it's House Mark, yep. not House Marquee. Some say House Marquee. I think it's yeah. House Mark. Anyway, uh, they've said that they put the blame on the PlayStation console yeah. itself, and they said, "Hey, it's not us. Talk to PlayStation." I did see you know, that. And that that mm -hmm. was kind of weird, but uh, uh, hopefully they get that fixed. Um, yeah. But also, going back to Sony and this whole stuff with these email scandals and stuff, mm -hmm. we also heard stuff about how, um, uh, what was it? Um, the PlayStation, I don't even have my notes here. Man, mm -hmm. that's bad. That's cool, that's cool. Anyway, um, mm -hmm. so the whole PSN thing uh, on um, how they, what was it? Darn it. The, um, um, the, the Apple Epic. I know that was going on. Apple, what else you yeah, the Apple Epic. But the PlayStation. Um, oh, it was the lawsuit, the consumer lawsuit that people are talking about. How the consumers are actually, you know, suing Sony because of their not them not letting their games, their game codes, the digital codes mm -hmm. be sold elsewhere outside of the PlayStation store. Mm. And this is a big deal to a lot of people because they're saying that this makes it to where there's no uh, there's no chance of getting a sale on these PlayStation digital games. So right. essentially, it's kind of a, like a, a small monopoly, if you will. Right. Like mm -hmm. they're not letting these out and you can't buy them anywhere else where you can buy some Xbox codes elsewhere right. or you can buy, you know, different various games elsewhere. But Sony's not letting this happen. Mm -hmm. And so some consumers are putting up a lawsuit. Mm. Um, any any thoughts on that? Yeah, this one I remember. I mean, it came across my my table, but I didn't really dive too deep. Usually, I wait for my man Hogue to, to jump on it, but I, I did see it. You know, I didn't get the intro. Yeah. I'm glad you told me about it. I didn't the intricacies of it. Yeah, it's interesting, right? Because it's like okay, so PlayStation in a sense is saying these games digital. Just to be clarified, these games digitally can only be codes can only be used on our storefront and not elsewhere is that yep. the just, okay that's that's it yeah yeah i mean you know it's one of those again whole law situation where it's like is it in contractually do they have it set up where their storefront is the you know de facto end all be all and they're trying to lock people in for that type of engagement if they have it set up contractually as as 
bad as and you know as it seems then they may be able to you know win that easily you know i don't know but i know with other you know with xbox let's just use the competition obviously they can they, they don't necessarily have to go through that i can understand the consumer frustration with that because obviously you want it yeah. to be accessed in other places you don't want to just be locked into that so it, it comes down to the verbiage on how the digital distribution on the storefront with codes is handled by playstation i don't know that off top so again nah, i don't either i defer the whole you know he been able to look through the language of that and and see because they it may be a protection with sony like sony is has things and i've seen them in the past you know with with i mean all companies some companies also like you know hey it can only be done in this way they may have that language in there so you know we'll see i, I don't know off top but we'll see what you think yeah yeah i, I i'm thinking about the same thing uh you know guys mm-hmm. like hogue you know lawyers and stuff would be best to speak on this yeah. topic and and it, it would be fun to hear his thoughts as well yeah. i i just wanted to uh bring that up real quick because it, again it was something that you know, it, it just seems like every time, you know, Sony does something right and, and th- you know, something comes out that <laughs> they're doing wrong or, you know, it's this generation consumers are getting upset about. Mm-hmm. And, you know, it just seems like right now, uh, marketing wise, uh, it seems like Xbox has been firing on all cylinders this generation. Finally, they're competing right. again and it feels great. And I know Sony's not going anywhere. I know Sony's going to come back with something great, but... It's good to finally have some great competition. I don't like hearing bad stuff about this, about either company, but it's just, again, it's those things that's leaking out and stuff and people are talking about. And uh, another thing that's going on now is the fact that we are, um, uh, the Sony redesign, the PS5 redesign, man. And I heard you guys speak on it on ILP. Mm -hmm. And for me, it's like, okay. So I know they're going from a seven nanometer chip to a six nanometer chip. Right. And it's all about, they're saying it's all about, you know, trying to get more consoles built and put mm-hmm. out there. Mm-hmm. And I, I'm good with that. That's mm-hmm. fine. Okay. But just six months in, you're talking about this. <laughs> it's, it's kind it's of the weird. Timing. Like, that's the time you got, you got the issue with the timing. That That's what it is to me. It's the timing. And it's mm-hmm. also the fact that I'm looking at it like, wait a minute, wait a minute. So you're telling me, I just bought mine two months ago, right. and you're already talking about a redesign, a possible redesign that could, could mm. potentially be better than what I have. Even if it's just marginally, I don't mm. care. It's going to make me feel some type of way, Cognito. It just I, will. I feel you. I mean... It just I, will. I, I'm not there yet, but I, I know where you're going because a lot of, you know, Sov is actually with you. I was surprised Sov said it today on IP. He's with you. Yeah, I you saw know, that. I was, yeah, so I was, I was surprised. You. Yeah, I think, you know, again, you know, with the PlayStation 4 generation, they did it 10 months in. You know, these small yeah, little revisions, yeah. whatever. So if they find something from a, you know, mass production standpoint that makes them more efficient to get more consoles, that to me is ultimately what I care about. These systems need to be out on, in more people's hands. But to your point, if when, let's say, for example, there is a performance check or whatever between the old model and the new model, and like, for example, with the Nintendo Switch, you know, the Nintendo Switch purposely had a new model that actually gave it more battery life. You know what I mean? Now, Mm -hmm. that's a huge advantage. And that's something... I had to feel a way about and I actually literally bent the knee and bought that model switch because I'm like, damn, like that. I need that. I'm a portable switch user. Now, in this case, you know, who's to say if there's any, you know, from what they're making it seem, it's nothing that's going to affect performance or whatever. But we have to see. Right. We have to see when, you know, yields and performance and whatever, whatever that that's going to be the tell. You know, right now, I think it's a, a little overblown. Well, but, yeah, but I, agree. I understand the concern. I understand the concern. There's concern out there by many people who are looking for an SSD solution. Like my man Mass Erect here says they need to find a solution for the SSD expansion problem because right now yes. it is a problem. I agree. Um, this is something that they've been promising for since it's come out. They've yeah. been saying, look, we're working on it. We're going to get you some uh, sort of solution here. We're going to have, you know, SSDs for you to choose from and all this. Where are they? No, that, now you're talking about redesign. Bro. It's like, what's going on here, people? Now, this is the fight I agree we need to be fighting. That, to me, is unacceptable. Yes. These consoles, first of all, me and you, Fonz, we know the real. When they tell mm-hmm. you, oh, one terabyte, no, it's not. 
because the operating system is going to take up a big chunk. You know what I mean? And there's always some reserved, you know, not, that's not left for the game. So then when you actually see what your hard drive space is, it's not that full one terabyte. So that's the first thing. Yeah. Second of all, unlike the Xbox, right? They didn't have the USB storage option 3.0 like a caddy like everyone else so at least the xbox guy you know not only did he have the nvme store xbox expansion card for you know the fact it was pricey but at least he had the option but if they didn't want to spend the 200 they could say okay you know what i'll grab this usb boom i can at least store my games i'm right good. playstation didn't even right. have that option until recently that is yes. an unacceptable yes. with the size of these games 4k assets Man. all this stuff bro i literally filled my playstation 5 up with maybe four games and it was already like oh we're out of space and i'm like yo this is a problem so that's the fight because here's the thing when the thing was I when agree. the system was announced and they said a ssd solution they praised it everyone praised it because they was like look sony's not forcing you into proprietary mode they're letting you have these options where are the options that are to ps5 nvme spec that's going to allow us to continue and play these games with the storage we need. That's a big problem. I think more people should get on for that. That is yeah. unacceptable to me. It is. It, it really is. Mm -hmm. um, you know, I've always said that when tech, any tech comes out, doesn't matter yeah. what it is, whether it's a cell phone, a video game, uh, game console, your Blu-ray player, damn it. If they promise something in the future, you better question that. Yes. I, they do this a lot in the TV world. Okay, that's where I know yeah. from. Firmware update is going to come in. <laughs> yeah. Don't worry. The firmware update is going to fix your audio issues. It's going to fix the, everything. It's going to make you toast. It's going to do everything for you. It's coming. All right. I'm looking at you, Samsung. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah. They, they, they've been dirty uh, about mm -hmm. promising and not right. delivering. So um, I, I just look at this situation. I'm looking even at the VRR situation with Sony. VRR is not even there yet. And it, to me, this just seems like something that should have been there day one. Now, I don't know why it's not there. I'm and and I know their TVs even don't do that. It, right. You know, they most of their TV lineup don't even have VRR enabled. Right. So, now, mm -hmm. you know, the only point I was going to say, it, I'll circle back to your initial, you know, um, component change part. That is where I see where you and Sav are, because what happens is it starts to become a litany of little things that keeps adding yep. up. Why is this not there? Why is this not working? Why is this not available? What's going on with this, with the hardware? And now, I, you know, I can understand where it's like, okay, here's this. Why are we changing the redesign? I get it. I get it. And, and definitely, you know, the eyebrow raise kind of like what's, what's It's going not on. even incognito. This is not a fanboy thing at all. This is right. strictly, and I'm looking at you guys out there. This is strictly a gamer's perspective. I don't know why a lot of you, you know, even Sony guys out there, aren't really pushing for this. Hey, right. what about our SSD solution? Hey, what right. about VRR? I mean, right. you guys are just sitting on it going, well, it'll come, it'll come. And yeah, you know I'm what? Not. I've said that a lot for companies in the past Facts. with TVs, whatnot, and it's Facts. never come. Bro. It happens sometimes and you get burned. Facts. And I'm just saying, we as consumers, because that's what we are, we're, we're gamers and consumers, we need to start uh, just Preach. preaching this stuff. Preach we need to. Up. I'm on them all, man. So switch where I'm on them. Like, where is my voice chat? Where is the, you know, the cloud saves at the beginning? That you know, too. Oh, yeah. bro, it's so many issues. So it's just like, and I just see some of, you know, my Nintendo guys like, oh, what Nintendo is just like that. Yeah. No, yeah. that's not acceptable. Like, yeah. And, and for years, yeah. I preached about the uh, free to play paywall on the Xbox. Oh, yeah. I, I even added Phil Spencer on that and got xbox fanboys mad at me for doing so but i'm like look we need to stop this nonsense they Fact. need to open it up there's Fact. no reason for this as a I gamer agree. and a consumer I, I look out for all of us you know what yeah. i'm saying like I, I don't mind being a voice out there that annoys the fanboys i don't mind yeah. being that voice What's because right for me it's it's right exactly and that's mm -hmm. what it's down to it comes down to just you know knowing that as a consumer i'm right in this situation and we need we need to talk on it, and that's why we're talking on it today. Uh, it's just it's crazy. This whole SSD thing, this whole freaking no VRR. It's like I'm enjoying VRR on my Xbox. Oh, oh it, it's sweet. You rocking it. What, 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 TV, what TV you rocking it on, sir? I'm rocking the LG CX, brother. Ooh, and uh, let me tell you, I, it, man, that CX I got that. I got that VRR life going on, Ooh. and I don't notice those frame dips every time. Ooh. 
case in point, those Sony dudes like to point it out and say, oh, our game runs three, four frames better than yours. I'm like, I don't even feel it. Not I don't VR. feel it at all. Like, it's that VRR is that good. And, and that's what it's about. If y'all had that, you could be speaking on Resident Evil Village right now because those dips, you'd barely feel any of that, you know? I so Shout out to you, Fonz, for hooking me up with my config on my CX. Hey. Brother, got hey. me looking right out here. Man, it's so nice, man, isn't it? It's so yeah, nice. It, dude, that TV's glorious. Shout out to Red. He, he got his, he up to, his up this to the CX. And yeah, man, CX is still moving. If, you, if you're a next-gen console lover, you want to push the envelope with these systems, I highly recommend. And now's a good time to get it, because I believe the other ones are coming out. But the CX is still, yeah, yeah, yeah. Comparison, still, still stand strong next to it. Yeah, anyway. oh, yeah. I, I've seen a bunch of comparisons with the C1, the new yeah. one. And uh, it's it's better marginally, mm -hmm. and and it's got its it's got its pros, but honestly, you can't go wrong with it, uh, like hundreds of dollars off yes. for the CX. I mean, Absolutely. you're talking five hundred dollars off, Absolutely. and uh, it's 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 a good buy. Anyway, I'm not here to sell TVs, Cognito, but we're selling TCLs. Yeah. We're not selling TCLs today. King's not here, so we're not doing that. <laughs> or I'm sorry, King moved on to Westinghouse. So uh, yes, he yeah, did today. I forgot about that. Nino yeah. got him to uh, Neo got him to move to uh, Westinghouse. Neo dropped the bag. Yeah. Uh, oh yeah. One hundred twenty hertz is nice too with that CX. Oh, oh man, glorious with those what, Titan four one twenty. Yeah. Ooh, cool. yeah. Yes, Ramon was saying that his TV can do four K one twenty two. Let's go. Yes, you're right, brother. It's one twenty is nice, and uh, yeah, uh, that's another thing. FPS boost, man. All these games being boosted on the Xbox Series X and S as well. We're getting a lot of games at 120 frames now. It's it's really nice. It's really oh, nice to see. And a lot of people talk about backwards compat. You know, I don't need backwards compat. We want to look forward and everything. Play some of these games, you know, these older games at these frame rates. It's like playing a whole new game. It's, it's really cool to see. Facts, bro. It's really cool to see. One of the best innovations. I don't. I don't not like showering them enough for that because one, it's free. Two, they have reason, they're dedicating resources to do that for preservation. And like you said perfectly, it's giving new life to games. Because let's be real, like when you see a just from 30 to 60, man, it hits different. It it, it, yeah, it truly it is transformative. So I'm I'm loving it, man. I've been in my Titanfall 2 bag doing that and, and just seeing more games continually added. Shout out to them, man. They're really killing it. Jason Ronald, his team, all those guys. FDS, FPS boost, quick resume, <laughs> auto HDR. Those are my three favorite features of the series. X. You know, Cognito, I figured it out about Jason Ronald. Let's go. You know why he's got that long beard? Right he's, a wizard, he's a wizard, bro. He's a wizard. And and he's a wizard at what he does there. That, that whole backwards compat boot frame rate boosting is amazing. That amazing. stuff is amazing. And you know, and to me think and that you. this is all done. Mm -hmm. on a hardware level and it's not even we don't even need the developers to do anything it's it's crazy it's and you know like, me and you are team fps over resolution yeah mm -hmm. we always going to be frame. yeah yeah mm -hmm. Ex uh, yeah frame rates over resolution all day every day that's Fact. for sure uh, i just wish that they these wizards would come up with a way to get these 720 games up to 1080p at least you know what yeah. i'm saying that's the only thing i wish they could do but you know, that I think would take uh, the developers. Um, yeah, optimization. Mm -hmm. But yeah, man. So what are you playing lately? Oh, man, I've been doing a lot, man. I've been actually uh, Yakuza Like a Dragon got me, bro. That oh, really? game is hilarious, but it's good. It has some deep, complex stories. They do like to talk a lot. There's a lot of cinemas for everything. But that I probably one of the most fun games I've played in a long time. Um, I'm gonna get back in Outright just to finish it because I finally got my damn character back. Which oh, I did you? I had to oh, resolve. Say, yeah. Did you actually get to log in though? Yeah. Here's okay. the thing: good, when they good. did the restoration, when they stole my clothes, left me in my boxes without my loot, <laughs> <laughs> then they brought me back, and I couldn't log in. So now I couldn't get past the title screen. So what you got to do? Clear the cache, which is unplug your joint for about five, what you call it, minutes, whatever. Then do an uninstall, reinstall, and then I was able to get in. So I just want to get that done. Obviously, the new Destiny season's coming, but I've been rocking that. I'm going to probably touch Wasteland 3 because they got a 60 frames per second bump, and it's a two-player co-op uh, right. game. I want to get that going, and there's one more. I play a little bit of Returnal, but obviously the bug I, I kind of threw me off a little bit. But there's um, there's Come one on, more. you know it's too hard for you. It's too hard. 
I don't really it's rock too hard. games like that. It's to be hard. honest, to be honest, like I'm not really. I, I don't either. Like I don't like that. roguelike games. I yeah, don't like that. them. That's 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 why I said I I wouldn't purchase it. So I'm surprised you I'm purchased only, it. Only reason why I'm in is because Addict is my share partner on PlayStation. Gotcha. So I was like, oh, you get it? I'm good. Yeah. You know what I'm I can yeah. try it out. But yeah, I've been right. And you know what? Surprisingly. MLB the show, bro. I I got back into baseball because yeah. of this. So I've been watching, man. Watch my little Mets get in there and play the little modes. And I, that was fun. I pl- I played on baby mode, you know. Yeah, me little, too. I was like, let help me, me out mode. Help me out. Let me and, get my, and I, my base running right. Yeah, I played nine innings and uh, played played a full game, and I had fun with it. I was yeah. I was pleasantly surprised. I was like, wow, and it, and it looks pretty good too. The mode uh, you, got you know, to the mode you got to try is uh, March to October. Because what will happen is they'll put you in key moments within the season and it'll skip a lot of games. And then you can build mm. momentum and stuff like that. It's really fun. Like that that game okay. is a lot of fun, bro. Yeah, my my last baseball game that I really, really enjoyed was Baseball Stars on the Ooh. NES. That's, that's the one that we used to play a lot of back in the day. Because that one was the first game where you can build your own team. Actually, input names and stuff, yes. make your own team, get on there and play against the lovely ladies and the, the ninjas ladies. and all those. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. I, I bet that was a great, great game um, Classic, for bro. baseball anyway. Classic. I know you guys today were talking about NFL a lot, and I played a bunch of those games back in the day. 2K5 is still my favorite NFL oh, game of all time. What a go. Dreamcast, of course. Of course. So, of course. And we played that online as well back in the day. Mm-hmm. Yes, with VM. Not very well. Not very, Not very well, well, I'll tell you that. <laughs> but Windows it played CD online. And the modem. Yeah. And yeah, and that's the thing too. A lot of people don't understand that Microsoft created that modem for the Dreamcast. So it's pretty crazy. A lot of memory, really great console. But yeah, lately I, I've just been playing. Uh, I, I've been playing some Game Pass games, just dabbling here and there. Uh, Octopath Traveler is one that I got into. It's pretty good. Uh, JRPG, and I've got uh, Destroy All Humans is oh, in Game fun. Pass now, and it's like the re. The reboot, or not the reboot, but the remake, or you know, mm-hmm. remaster. It looks really good. It, it looks, looks really fantastic. Good. Yeah, it does, and it's, it's fun. fun. It's it's fun to just get in there and mess around with, especially when you're in party chat or something. You don't really have to pay attention to the story or anything because you're just like throwing hillbillies around and stuff. <laughs> um, that's all you're doing anyway. That's all it's about. <laughs> Terrorizing, or, or or taking cows and stuff, <laughs> but doing crazy stuff. <laughs> uh, but yeah, man, it's 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 been a good time. And uh, we're already getting to the end of the show here. So it's almost time to go. Um, anything you want to shout out before we get out of here today? Yeah, man. Look, man. Shout out. To, first of all, shout out to you. Because, uh, again, I love this, man. Games Talk Live. We got the platform. Just two OGs talking, gaming, having fun, taking it back to the essence. I miss this kind of stuff. I Appreciate love this it. kind of stuff. So got to support you, man. This is this is great. And um, yeah, man, like I said, if you want to catch me, y'all guys know me, at Lord Cognito on Twitter, Iron Lord Podcast, every Sunday. If you want a fun debate, check out the Mass Effect debate we had, man, with, with a lot of fun people. But the who's who of the community just is talking it up. And we still do the Luda Shooter podcast with the last word. The, probably the most thing I, I'll point is if you guys support uh, Lords Gamer that, that that really means a lot. Just the articles and stuff like that. These guys, no one's getting paid. This is just for the gamers, by the gamers kind of thing. And we're just trying to build careers and get things popping and try to do media in a different way. You know, it doesn't have to be sensational. It doesn't have to be clickbait. You know, just about a real opinions, real walkthroughs, reviews with completions, and, <laughs> and uh, you know that kind of stuff. But yeah, check us real out. Completions, man. that's right. You know what I'm saying? But yo, Fonz, man, this was fun, bro. I really, I appreciate stuff. you, man. And like I said, man, uh, these guys are like, oh, that was quick, blah blah blah. I, I'm only doing an hour on this cast every every other week. You're not getting to the hour doing- lots. I'm not doing, look, look, I will go to your podcast and do that three hours. You guys make it a lot of fun, but these one-on-ones, especially when news is kind of dry, which yeah. it is kind of this week, uh, I, I, I'm definitely not doing more than an hour. I think, one, it respects my guest's time, especially when you're coming off a three and a half no, hour no. podcast. I, I did look forward to it. I was like, you know what? This is what I would hit just right after yeah. the day. <laughs> yeah. And, the weekend, and I'm going to have all your information in the description of this video. Uh, I'll have, you know, everything, Twitter, lordsofgaming.net. I'll have your YouTube, all of that stuff. But I really appreciate everybody. Uh, I'm going to get this last um, super chat here. It says, I really love the debate. Salute to you and Sov. Talking about the Mass Effect debate. If you have not watched that, guys, it's a lot of fun. They 
They're debating between what was better, Mass Effect 1 or Mass Effect 2. And some frauds out there on the Mass Effect 1 team wanted to wait till after the new yeah. remastered version came Easily. out. Because all those fixes, they were going to use the gameplay style of Mass Effect 2 and Mass Effect 1. And that would not be fair. Because Bad. I might even change at that point. Exactly. Who knows? Who knows? Who knows? Right? Because yeah. the story is great in Mass yes. Effect 1, yes. but the overall gameplay experience, experience, Mass Effect 2, Mass Effect 2 has it down pat. Blows it away. The overall experience. Know. But, uh, of course, you guys can find me here at Fonzarelli Gaming. You're here now. Or you can uh, find me on Twitter at jfonzarelli. Mm -hmm. uh, that like button. You know, two hours, to the channel. Two hours. Subscribe to the channel. I appreciate all you guys. Appreciate all the new channel members that i've gotten i appreciate you seriously i mean this is something that i really want to take serious here is this games talk live and all my videos as well that i do i don't have much time i work sometimes 84 hours a week you, at times so i work a lot i have a i have a big family and i try to get these videos out and i try to at least get one regular video out a week and then of course this games talk live every other week but Games Talk Live might in the future go to every Sunday. Who knows? But right now, it's every other week, and we'll see. And, oh, I got one more Super Chat from Maserat saying, Bill, <laughs> Bill convinced, convinced me. Yeah, listen. Okay, so Bill, wait to the update, then you can play and be convinced. We talk about yeah. it. It's an original form, sir. But salute to Maserat. He's a good guy, man. Yeah. And as Ramon Terrell says, hit that like button before you leave, because honestly, that helps my channel out a lot with that like button being hit. And until next time, guys, um, yeah, game on. Peace.